The Quran curiously says, the moon has mansions, manazil. The singular is manzil, a term that can mean a house or a place of residence. Within Quran translations, the word manazil is also translated as phases, stations or stages. For example, in the Sahih International Translation, it says for Quran 36, 39, and the moon we have determined for it phases until it returns like the old dried date stalk. In the Yusuf Ali translation, it says mansions for the word manazil. Quran 10.5 repeats again that the moon has manazil, mansions. Tafsir al Jalalain says the following about Quran 10.5 He it is who made the sun a radiance that is emitting light, and the moon a light, and determined it with respect to its movement in stations. Twenty-eight stations in twenty-eight nights, every month, becoming concealed for two nights when a particular month has thirty days are concealed for one night when it has twenty-nine days, so that you might know thereby the number of the years and the reckoning. From the Quranic verse, two issues are raised. The first is that the moon is said to have mansions, and secondly, it is likened to an old date stalk. Although there is a tendency amongst apologists to ascribe miracles to any Quranic verse, no exemption here. Not surprisingly, there is no miracle attached to the peculiar phrase of the moon being likened to an old date stalk. The Quranic reference of an old date stalk is an ancient Arab primitive precept based upon their observation of the moon rather than anything scientific or miraculous. For example, Al Qurtubi reported the following Katada said, The stalk is a dry bent bunch of a date tree. And Khalil ibn Ahmed said, the stalk is the root of the bunch. It is small and wide, and it resembles the crescent when it leans down. As the judge said, the stalk in the stick of the bunch from which stalks are cut, and it stays dry on the date tree. So if the stalk is old, it withers and becomes like a crescent in its shape. So it becomes like the moon in its thinness and yellowness. The meaning of old is the one on which a year or more elapses on it. When it is old, it becomes thin and curves down and becomes yellow in colour. It looks like the moon because it has three similar traits, thinness, curving and yellowness. In the explanation of al al-Zamakhshari, the reference to old dried date stalk means that the moon returns to be like an old curved stem of a palm tree. Further, referenced by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir or commentary, Ibn Abbas is quoted as explaining it to mean the moon at the end of its cycle is like the stalk of a bunch of dates when it becomes old. Ibn Kathir also quotes Ibn Mujahid, who says, quote, It is a dried stalk when describing the likeness of the moon at the end of the month. Despite what the commentaries say, modern day apologists claim the verse is a miracle, referring to the moon's S shaped orbit around the earth. Please feel free to pause the video to read the claims and visit the website. As seen in the previous slide, miracle seekers claim the moon follows a path through space which resembles the letter S. The appearance of this orbit is said to resemble a twisted shape 
of a dry date branch. Although the previous commentaries date a crescent shape, nonetheless, a typical old date stalk is pictured here. The S shape that is sought is not clear. It is obscure and vague. On the other hand, this image posted on a NASA website is a composite picture of the moon called a lunar anemone, which was produced by taking pictures at the same time each day over successive days and then superimposing the final picture. It traces out an anemone-like curve as the actual position of the moon due to the moon's tilted and elliptical orbit. This is very different from anything remotely resembling an S-shaped dried old date stalk. And even if it did, although it does not, it was based upon the ancient Arab observation of the night sky, so not miraculous at all. Next to the issue of the moon having mansions, although there are four major phases, new moon, first quarter, full moon, last quarter, from this there are further subdivisions of eight and twelve moon phases. As already seen in the Quran commentary, which talk about 28 stations, mansions, or manazil in the Arabic, others such as early Muslim philosopher Ibn Arabi also thought each mansion of the moon relates to the moon 28 phases. In addition, Ibn Arabi also connected it to the 28 letters of spoken Arabic, embodying its own sound. Nevertheless, the figure of 28 is no random figure. It has been enshrined in ancient lunar astrology, which will be explained next. This is because 28 is a mean number that comes from how long the moon takes to revolve around Earth. Astronomically, it takes just slightly over 27 days to orbit the Earth. However, its phases repeat approximately every 29 days. Now to the crux of the subject. Pictured here as evidence, the term manzil or station is therefore significant within Arabian lunar astrology. It is also significant within ancient Eastern astrology. This is because it has 28 mansions of the moon that divide the zodiac in the same way as the western solar based 12 signs of the zodiac marks out sectors of the circle of the sky. The station or menzil is a segment of the ecliptic through which the moon passes in its orbit around the earth. The concept of lunar stations is thought to have originated within Babylonian astronomy and has been used by several ancient cultures as part of their calendrical system. The lunar system of division may predate the solar zodiac since the stars remain largely visible and the moon's apparent motion against the background is clearly noticeable from night to night. For example, the famous philosopher, physician and occultist Cornelius Gripper in his De Occulta Philosophia, book on celestial magic of occult philosophy, asserts the importance of the lunar mansions. He mentions the names of spirits, angels, and their various impositions that are set over the stars, signs, corners of the heaven, and the elements. He explains concerning the 28 mansions of the moon that it measures the whole zodiac in the space of 28 days and how the ancient Indians, pre and post Islamic Arabs, and the most ancient astrologers thought it had powers. He explains that within the 28 mansions of the moon lie many secrets of the wisdom of the ancients as it travels through the constellations deriving differing powers and virtues. As such, the 28 mansions was believed to emanate an influence that was harnessed by magicians, according to the occultist Francis Barrett. For example, he says in his book, The Magis or Celestial Intelligencer, 
first published in 1801. Chapter 33 is dedicated to the 28 mansions of the moon, its virtue and use in occult magic and astrology. The link is below in the description on the research conducted by Ahmed al fajjawi who mentions that during the pre-Islamic times, the Arabs based their local weather predicting system of Anwa. It was based on the star groups, which rose just ahead of the sun at a given time of the year. They combined it with the lunar mansion system of the Nakshatra from Indian astrology. For example, this picture is from Zubdat at tawarikh from an Ottoman survey of world history by Sayyid Lukman Ashuri. The shows from the center, the ancient planets, the signs of the zodiac in a clockwise order, and the moon's phases in an anti-clockwise order, aligned with the mansions of the moon. So there is a connection between the 28 letters of the Arabic alphabet according to Ibn Arabi and the term manazil and the symbolic significance of the moon in Islam, particularly the crescent moon, twinned with Quranic references, gives the mansions a particular significance within Arabic astrology. In fact, it is through the Arabs that Hellenistic astrology, deriving in part from the system of Dorotheus of Sidon, including that of the Hermetic Corpus and ancient Chinese and Indian astrology, along with the positional number system were transmitted to Europe during the efflorescence of Islamic translation and science from the 9th to the 13th centuries AD. Much of the material was translated into Latin, usually in Spain, where Islam and Christendom met alongside Judaism. There were many Arab writers on astrology and almost all include the mention of lunar mansions. Some of the more influential Arab astrologers that were responsible include Ibn Atari, Abu Ali al Khayyat, Abu Mashab al Kindi, al Farghani, al Qabisi, Ali ibn Abi Rijal, and al Biruni. Here are some examples of lunar mansions amongst ancient cultures and its influence on Islamic lunar astrology is palpable. On the right is a manuscript dated to 1300 attributed to Muslim astrologer Abu Masha al-Balqi which contains the personification of lunar phases and below is a page from the Iskandar horoscope showing the position of the planets at the moment of Iskandar's birth on 25th of April 1384 in the form of a planisphere. Iskandar was a grandson of Tamerlane, the Mongol emperor. Despite its intimation in the Quran, giving it some semblance of credence and legitimacy, and the subsequent contribution made by Muslims in bringing lunar astrology to Europe, the irony is astrology is genuinely viewed as forbidden as a kind of sorcery and fortune telling. Prominent figures such as Al Ghazali and Ibn Taymiyyah forbade it as a field of study, but it was not clearly condemned by earlier scholars or even the majority, as many Muslim scholars practiced it. For example, Ali ibn Sulaiman al Hashimi, a Muslim scholar, justified the role of astrology in influencing Islamic adherents. His book, Kitab fi Ilam al Zijat, had become the dominant astronomical tradition in Islam, and it contains considerable material about the Indian and Persian astronomical traditions. Due to its prevalence, an early Islamic stance against that of astrology stems from individuals such as Ahmed ibn Musa ibn Shakir. The presence of historical texts such as Kitab al-Daraj, treatise on astrology pictured here, 
a proof of the presence of astrology in early Islam. So in conclusion, the Quran curiously says the moon has mansions. The term is synonymous with lunar astrology. It is significant within Arabian lunar astrology and within ancient Eastern astrology. This is because it has 28 mansions of the moon that divide the zodiac in the same way as the Western solar based 12 signs of the zodiac. The 28 mansions have been used within occultism and magic for centuries. Pre Islamic Arabs and then the Muslims based their lunar astrology upon the mansion system adopted from other cultures, whether it was the Babylonians, the Nakshatra from Indian astrology, or from the Chinese. Many prominent Arab and Muslim astrologers were responsible for introducing it to Europe. Although mainstream Islam forbids astrology of any kind, whether it is lunar or solar, this was not always the case, nor even the majority of early Muslims considered it wrong. This was in part of the Quran's tacit permissibility. The moon is likened to an old date stalk in the Quran. Although there is a tendency to attach miracles to it by some proponents, there is no miracle at all, as it is an ancient Arab primitive precept based upon their observation of the moon rather than anything scientific or miraculous. For the Arabs, the date stalk becomes thin, curves down and yellow in colour as it ages. So based upon their observation of the night sky, the moon was said to share some of its similar traits of thinness, curving and yellowness at the end of the month. Modern day composite picture of the moon, lunar and lemma, traces the actual position of the moon due to the moon's tilted and elliptical orbit. This is different from the S or crescent shaped pattern sought by miracle seekers.